Hey, um, I'm just gonna do a quick update, um, POTSI update. Um, a lot of people have to take a lot of medications, um, during the day, but right now I'm only on three medications, um, which is anything from three to five pills per day. Um, we're trying a new thing this um, year where we adjust my meds as the weather changes. Um, after noticing last year that I did much better off of a lot of my meds during the winter than I did the previous winter, um, I decided to mention to my daughter. So um, we're going to try that this year. As it cools down, my medications will decrease. And as it heats up and warms up, we'll increase and add um, as needed. And right now, um, these are the three that I'm on. Um, top one's clonopin or clonazepam. It's a generic brand. Um, a topper law ER um, and cetraline. That's the uh, Zoloft. And right now, I'm taking um, one a day of each. Um, I take them about an hour. I try to I try to take them about an hour before I start. Um, to get outside and do things. Um, sometimes it doesn't work out that way and I have to take them and then um, it takes a while for them to kick in. Um, if I need to, um, if my beta blocker, which is the metoprolol, um, isn't keeping my heart rate down enough, um, I can take an extra of that. Um, as well as the clonopin, um, I can take an extra of that. That helps with my breathing. Um, uh, I have what they I get, I get some call it an air gasp. Um, um, I call it, it's it's almost like I have a huge need um, to yawn and nothing. I, I can't get enough air in. It's um, some have called it air hunger. Um, it's just it's just a really bad, weird, scary feeling, especially um, when it takes a lot longer to um, get in the air that you you just your body's just craving it and you can't get enough enough in it's like um it's almost like it's blocked um from going further than you know i can't explain it it's just a really weird feeling um the uh the zoloft um i take it um it helps keep my mood swings and yes i have mood swings and they are not due to um just i mean they 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 they're due to um I guess the uh, excess adrenaline. Um, Serena, stop hitting the window. Um, my daughter's out. Um, I guess they're due to the excess adrenaline. I'm not sure, but I noticed. I've noticed um, that if I'm not good at avoiding caffeine, and and, and I and I really try, and most times I do. Um, there are some times. Um, I was told by a doctor that my body um, does not disperse caffeine like it should. Um, that instead of getting rid of it um, and, and getting an energy surge immediately like a lot of people do, um, my body will hold on to it until there's just a huge amount and then all of a sudden I have what I call a, an overload. Um, and my body and my mind, everything just feels like it's going 100 miles an hour and, and nothing, I, I can't slow down and I get angry and I get moody and I... Cause I, it's the weirdest feeling, and I don't understand um, at the time um, why I feel the way I feel. Um, but I do. I get angry and I get upset, and it and it's very very frustrating to feel like you can't s slow your body down or you can't stop it or whatever. And then it just does that, and it and it lasts for sometimes like half an hour, and then I have a just complete um, crash. Um, energy is completely spent um sometimes i'll sleep and sleep and sleep after this happens so i really really try to avoid caffeine as much as i can you know every now and again i'll have some chocolate it's uh, my weakness and i'm um, dr pepper but I'm, i've been doing the uh, caffeine free drinks as much as possible when i want a soda um the majority of my fluid intake is um, gatorade i hate gatorade but it's necessary um for the hydration and as well as the sodium content um uh, that was one of those little air gasp um i never have noticed when they're going to happen they just happen and sometimes they're really loud and people in church will actually turn and look at me and it's it's embarrassing but uh most people are around me have gotten used to it and 
they don't, you know, look at me funny. Um, sometimes when people see it happen and they've never seen it, they're like, oh my gosh, are you okay? And I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm okay. It just happens. Um, anyways, I don't even remember what I was talking about. Um, this happens quite often. Um, I lose train of thought very quickly. Uh, anyways, um, it's just, it's just weird how this disease does, um, affect everyday life. Um, I've kind of just learned to accept a lot of things. I've learned to accept that I'm not going to be able to do all that my mind wants me to do. Um, like right now in my yards, I would love to get out there and spend an entire day working in my yards, but in reality, my body will only allow me five to ten minutes at a time, and then I have to recuperate anywhere from 30 minutes to 45 minutes to an hour, sometimes even longer. Um, and as the temps warm up, it's going to get even harder. Um, as it starts getting above 70 degrees, and especially when the humidity kicks in, um, I won't be able to do much at all without getting very, very, very sick um, blackouts. Um, usually, as it gets hotter, I have blackouts, and um, the seizure-like stuff happens a lot more frequently, so I really enjoy the cool weather when it's around. Um, anyways, uh, I've kind of rambled, but that's going to happen quite a bit because I lose my track of thought very easily, and so I apologize up front for any rambling. Um, if you're around me, you've probably gotten used to this, um, even though I'm sure it's still annoying when I jump from subject to subject. Um, I don't realize that I do it, um, but it happens. Um, anyways, I guess that's, I don't even know what I've updated today. Um, I guess I'll find out when I watch this back. I'm not exactly sure what I've said. Um, I've already forgotten a lot of that, um, which is another horrible, horrible thing that I hate very, very much. And, um, it's, it's probably one of the most embarrassing parts of this disease is the fact that um, myself, who used to be able to remember everything, details, um, addresses, um, directions to places, um, everything, phone numbers. Um, now I, I can't remember anything. Um, I joked once, I told someone, I'm the perfect person to tell your secrets to because before I get off the phone or before you leave, I'm going to forget what you told me, um, which it's true. Um, very seldom do I remember a lot of things, so I use my computer. Um, I make notes, and, um, yeah, I have to. I make notes. I try to I try to make a blog, or if it's an important thing, I um, definitely make a note of it um, so that I can keep up with it, and I label everything on my computer. Um, so without my computer, I feel lost. Um, it, it's definitely my lifeline, um, not only to help me keep what small amount of organization and memory going that I can, but it's also like my link to the world because I am not able to get out. Um, I rarely leave my house. Um, I go to church, um, occasionally like, um, Sunday was the uh, first time in over a month I'd been to church. Um, I hate it when that happens, um, but it does happen. Um, I get I get sick, and there's weeks upon weeks that I don't even leave my house. Um, I think this last time it was a about about a two and a half week stretch that I didn't leave this location, and that gets very hard. Um, that's another hard part. Um, being able to get out and go and, and see people and because you kind of feel isolated you feel alone um, so my internet connection and my laptop allows me to, um, to to at least partake in con conversations um other people who have this disease um dysautonomia they call themselves potsies um, I'm able to talk with them and I'm able to communicate with them online, and uh, my family, I'm able to see pictures of my family. I've not been home in about two years um, to where all of my family lives, so there's a lot of babies been born, and I'm able to keep up with that via Facebook, um, so that's great, I, um, but if you, if, if brain fog, um, 
I guess, I guess I should probably end this now before I get even more confused. Um, I'll try to do another update soon. Um, and I hope that somewhere along the line, if you have this disease or if you know one, know someone who may have this disease or even someone who does have it and, and you don't quite understand and you're not sure how to help them, that maybe seeing that um, other people experience the same things they do. It's not just them. Um, they're not faking. Um, Lord knows if I could get up and and jump in the car and drive and go fishing and and um, get out by myself, I would, you know, it's just, it's something that I would, I would be there. Um, fact is, is I don't drive um, because of the danger. Um, maybe once every three to four months, I'm well enough to drive a few miles. Um, and I mean just a few miles, literally like maybe five miles. Um, I never do so alone. Um, I never go anywhere al alone anymore. Um, I'm always supervised. Um, even if it's just my kids, um, they've been taught what to watch for, um, what to look for, who to call, um, what to do in case of an emergency. Um, and they're only seven and three, just turned seven. Um, but they're great kids. And um, But I'm never alone. Um, probably never will be again unless God decides to heal me or a cure is found. Um, that's been a huge adjustment. So if you know someone and, and they're a friend and they say, oh, I can't go, I, I really don't feel like it. And, and they may look fine. Like right now, I, I'm other than the obviously disarray, I've got a cap on. I've not felt like fixing my hair today. Um, I've just thrown on an old t-shirt. I don't feel like getting dressed. Had I taken time to get dressed, um, there wouldn't be this video because I would have been too exhausted to do it. Um, it's just, uh, it's, it's hard. And so if you know someone and, and they're new to this disease or that maybe they've always had it and you've never understood it, um, try to go easy on them because it's not their choice to stay inside all the time. It's not their choice to um, be alone all the time. But a lot of times it becomes easier um, than trying to explain why you can't do things. Um, explaining why I can't do things. Um, I have one good friend um, um, outside of family um, who I've grown very close to. Um, her name's Carolyn and she's awesome. And um, she's, she's probably the only person um, outside of family and even a lot of my family. Um, they don't know everything. But um, when she asks me how is my day, I know that I can literally tell her and um, she, she's going to get it. I mean, she's, she's done everything, and I, and I believe that she's done everything she can to understand me and my disease, and I really appreciate it. And people like me, um, we need that. Um, we need people to, to try and understand um, living with someone like me. It's hard um, living with someone and having to deal with um, the unknown of, no plans. You can't make plans because, you know, everyone gets disappointed when you make a plan and that day comes and you're too sick to go and then everyone's disappointed. So we do a lot of spur of the moment things. Um, if I'm up to it, we jump in the van and we may ride to the river just to sit or we may ride down to Taney Hill and let the girls play. It's, um, it's, it's, it's living on the edge, really. Um, you never know what's going on. So I guess um, that's pretty much it for the day. Um, I'm, my, my, my speech is getting weaker and it's getting harder to, to, to talk and um, harder to think. Um, I can feel my voice getting shaky. So um, I'm going to end it now and um, I will see you next time. Bye.